Hey everyone, it's Jeff from Programmer vs. World, and this is setting up your development environment with Eclipse and BND tools on the Programmer vs. World YouTube channel. So if you don't have Eclipse already, it's really easy to install. Just go to eclipse.org, find the big orange button in the upper right hand side of the screen and click on it. Pick a version from the list, in this case we'll use Mac OS 64-bit, and then use the default mirror to start the download. I'm not going to have to do this because I've already downloaded it. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my finder, into the downloads directory where I have it. The Mac automatically removes the gzip from it, so all I really have to do is unzip it. And then I can move this entire folder into any directory that I want. And as you can see, everything you need to run Eclipse is already inside the folder. So let's get started. So to open Eclipse, let's go back in our finder. What we do is we just double click on the Eclipse icon. We don't need you finder anymore. And for a, for a workspace, I'm just going to use OSGI underscore tutorial, if I can spell it. It just keeps everything separate so that I don't mess up my workspace directory. So once we're inside Eclipse, go to Help and go to the Eclipse Marketplace. Once it's done loading, go in the Find bar and type BND Tools, all one word. Now we're going to get about four results back, but the one we want is the guy here with the big purple logo and uh, 17.8 thousand installs. Let's hit the install button on that. Install both BND tools and the jar viewer. Accept the public license if you're into that sort of thing. We may get a pop up here that we have one unsigned jar in this distribution. When it comes up, we'll just hit OK on it. There it is. And restart Eclipse. Go back into our original workspace, OSGI tutorial. And we're all set up. We can tell because on the What's New menu now, we now have a big BND tool section. Before we end this tutorial, let's create a BND tool sample project just to make sure everything's in good working order. So if we go to Eclipse and we say File, New, Other, we'll notice there's a BND Tools folder now. If we select the BND Tools OSGI project and hit the Next button, we can create, I don't know, let's call it BND Demo. We'll create a project called BND Demo. If we hit the Next button and choose Component Development and click Finish, we should get a BND project created for us. Now, the first time you create a BND project in a new workspace, you'll get this pop-up that asks you to create a configuration project. Leave everything default on it and go ahead and hit the Next button. And under Select Template, select the Bundle Hub configuration. If we wait just a few seconds, that little red X will go away. And you will be left with two warnings, though these warnings don't actually mean anything. Uh, but the warning will say that BND has 1.5 while Eclipse has whatever Java version that you're running. You can just ignore these for now. They're not critical. And sometimes they go away on their own. So let's take a tour of what's inside of our newly created project. We have a BND demo project folder now, which has a source directory and actually has a sample module built for us. It has a test directory and has a sample unit test built for us. It has a JRE system library, which is normal for most Java projects. This is your core library of where your references are. But it also has a BND bundle path library. This guy is snapped into your CNF repository. Your configuration directory here has its own repository on the inside. So it allows you to, to get references from inside your repository now and not have to actually have the jars present in your class path. There's a settings folder, which you probably won't see unless you've turned your filter for dot off. And there's a generated directory. Inside the generated directory, you'll notice there's a jar file already named BND Demo. BND Tools rebuilds its individual modules each time you hit the Save button. So this is actually a jar file containing our example component. And we can see this now if we double click on it. We now have a jar viewer built into Eclipse that allows us to look on the inside of the jar file and see what was archived. And here we'll notice we actually have a manifest that set up the OSGI component for us. We have our XML file that's actually declaring 
our declarative services information inside the bundle. You'll notice we have a source directory in which the actual Java is being included in it. We can set some options and turn it off, but then we also have our compiled class is also on the inside of the bundle. So any changes that we make to the source and test after hitting save all will completely repackage the jar file and have it ready for us again. There's also two more files that you need to get used to. There's one that was created for you called bnd.bnd. This is actually a bundle descriptor. And there's one called launch.bndrun. This is a launch descriptor. By default, it creates one called bnd.bnd just so that it can include this package for your source and build the bundle for you. It created a default launch BND run so that you could go ahead and launch that bundle inside of Apache Felix if you want. Now we're going to get to this in other tutorials, but we're not going to get too awfully concerned with it now. Just know that for every bundle you want to create, you're going to have a BND bundle descriptor. And for every type of framework that you want to test, you're going to have a launch descriptor. And this is very powerful if you think about it, because that means you can test across multiple containers. And by default, every Felix version from 4.03 all the way to 4.41 is snapped in. And four different versions of Equinox are also snapped in and ready to go. It's a very powerful feature. And we're going to use all these features as time goes on. But for now, we verified that our BND Tools project is running fine. We have it installed in Eclipse, and we're ready to do some more tutorials. So I'm going to end this one. For Programmer vs. World, this is Jeff, and you guys have a good one.